Hey, welcome back to the Wisdom Vault. This is Dr. Sonia TV. Oh man, do I have a topic for you today? Powerful women dating and marriage. What? You know, I've been wanting for a very long time to have this conversation. Now, let me explain. What do I consider a powerful woman? A powerful woman is someone who is taking up space in this world. They may be an influencer. They have influence on country, nations, community. They have their own tribe of people that they're serving. Powerful women that are bringing so many amazing things to the table. And I'm not just talking about money, income, and all of that. I mean someone who really has a voice, and now she's deciding to date or to be married. Now, if you're watching this, maybe you're a powerful woman and maybe you're in this place and you find it very challenging to date. I want to share a little bit about my story and maybe you find it even more challenging to be married and finding that man that can go through this journey with you. Just think about it like this. I can remember when I began this journey of the Dr. Sonia movement or the Dr. Sonia experience is what I call it. And I begin this journey thinking about, now let me go back a little bit. I was married for 18 years, 18 long years. It wasn't always bad. We had two beautiful children together, but it ended in a divorce and it took about three years for that divorce to end. And I was devastated because I really thought we were going to be together forever, ever. That didn't happen. And when I went through that, my thought was, I'm never getting married again. Relationships are too hard. And the truth be told, I don't believe at that time I was a powerful woman. I was retired military 21 years. I've been to combat, all those things. And I guess I could say I was powerful in that right. But really coming in and being an influencer and all of that, I really began to step into my power. Maybe you're stepping into your power. Maybe you've been in this power situation for a long time. And like me, when I began to date after that divorce and really stepping into my business and being successful and bringing even more to the table in a relationship, I start looking at things differently. I put these three blocks up here because I believe there's three different areas you have to consider when dating and even marriage. When I began this journey of dating. And again, I was married for 18 years and I came after, you know, in my 40s dating like, man, who wants to date in their 40s? Now, maybe you're younger and that's great. You get to learn this lesson early. But if you're watching me right now and you are in this place where you're over 40 or maybe you're over 50 and maybe you were married for years or maybe you've never been married, I believe for powerful women, dating and relationships in marriage are different. You want to know why? It is simply because you have more at stake than everybody else. I'm not saying that you're better than anybody else. So don't be all up in my comments talking about, but you say, no, I'm not. What I'm saying that women that are really stepping up into their power and bringing more to the table, and now you decide, make a conscious decision that you want a partner in this, you want to date, you want to be serious, you want to be committed, and you possibly want to get married. Things are going to be different for you because you have more to lose than someone coming to the table and still trying to figure out who they are. You know who you are. You know what you bring to the table and you know the value of who you are in any and every relationship. So let's get into this, shall we? One of the biggest things is when you're thinking about dating as a powerful woman, you have to think about the very thing that most people are not thinking. Can your relationship that you're going to be in with someone, will it add value to who you are? Will it add value to who you are, who you're becoming, and who you've become? So, so many times, and I will even say for me, at the beginning when I started to date, I just really wanted to be in a relationship. This is after the divorce and all of that. I just wanted to be in a relationship. Now that was dangerous. It is literally like you sitting on the corner, I need a man, I need a man, I need a man. What? Who does that? Who stands on the corner and says, that's a different story, don't answer that question, okay? But literally, what woman of power stands on a corner and just says, I need a man? And I'm a visual thinker, I'm a visual learner, and so I visualize things that way, and I could see myself standing on the corner, I just need a man. No, 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 no. You don't just need a man. You don't just need a husband. In my opinion, you need someone that's going to bring value to who you are right now. You've been working very hard to be a better woman, to be a better human being. Why in the world will we just show up in this place and in this space 
and not want a person to add value. And it's not just you adding value to them. Are they adding value to your life? Now, I want to make sure I say this because I've seen so many times women say, well, I'm a high quality woman. Okay, that's great. High quality woman. Are you bringing value to the person that you're in the relationship with? And even more importantly, are they bringing value to who you are? I believe we can be great alone, but I think we can be awesome and amazing with our partner that comes into our lives that understand it's a give and take relationship and it's bringing value. And so if you're in a relationship right now, even a marriage, I want you to think about it. Is that relationship, you have to ask this question, you have to be honest, is that relationship bringing value to who you are as a human being and as a woman? Again, is it bringing value? And are you bringing value to that person? The next thing is all about this. And I said this to someone once, it's all about support. It's not just value, it's support. So after being married 18 years, it took about 10 years before I really got into a serious relationship. And I dated this young man for about mm, three or four years before we got engaged. Three years and then we got engaged. I'd never dated anybody that long. I learned so much about true love and not just love. And I learned that it's not all just about love, not over 40. I know you're going to disagree and that's fine. But what I've seen in this space, being a powerful woman and helping and serving other powerful women is the support piece. I have seen so many women be in relationships that they're not getting the support that they need, whether it's in business, support of helping them and not helping them be happy, because I believe you should be happy before you get into a relationship and not get in a relationship or a marriage for somebody to bring that to you. You should come to the table with it. And so support the relationship that you're in right now and the marriage that you're in right now. Is it bringing you support or are you still asking for permission? Oh, yeah. Shots fired. I know. Are you still asking for permission to do things? Now, this is going to cause a little controversy. I know. And I normally hear it from women of faith. No, religious women. I'm not even going to say women of faith. Because the man is ahead and all of that. Do I believe that? I do. However, I believe there's two people in a relationship and not just one. Now, you can go down the rabbit hole in your chats and do all of that. But my, what I'm saying to you is, where is the support? Where is the person where you're supporting and they're supporting you? And it's not just you supporting them. After being married and I remarried, my encore marriage, shall I say, I was more concerned with the value that I brought to the table and what he brought to the table. And I didn't need him and want him to be just like me, right? Was he going to support me on this journey? Building, I'm building an empire and there are investments that I needed to make and there's decisions that I needed to make. And one of the biggest things, and I'll be honest, this is just me, I really hesitated to date seriously because of how I was reared. The man is ahead and he's all that, which I do believe per se, to a certain extent. You can say what you want. But I also know that as we are believers and we have higher faith, I believe that there are visions that were given to us as individuals and not the couple. And the last thing that I wanted to do was be in a relationship with someone. I'm over here working my butt off. I'm making impact and an influence. And when it came to income, I had to ask for permission to do that. Now, you may not agree with that. You may be mad or whatever the case. But my conversation that I had with my spouse before we got married, before we even got serious, I asked this very question. I said, if I needed to go and invest in something, and let's say it was $100,000, would you have the expectation for me to come and say, hey, babe, what do you think about this? And can I get your permission to do this? And do I have your permission to do that? Just to see what he was going to say. He said, why would I try to tell you what to do with your money? Okay. Why would I tell you that? And I know somebody's thinking, you just wanted somebody to be your boy toy, or your puppet or something. No, I didn't. But I did not want anybody coming into my life. And I'm saying this to you right now. You do not want somebody coming into your life that has an expectation for you to ask them permission to do all these things. I'll pause for a second and let you think about it. So, and, and this is just my thoughts. This may not be your thought or anybody else's, but I'm seeing some powerful women out there get with people that they ask, have to ask permission for 
to really continue to build their empire. Trust yourself, sis, in this. Trust what you're doing. And if you are a gentleman out there and you're watching this, because I realize that there's some amazing men that are watching me and they may be thinking, what about me? If you're with someone and you have to ask permission to do everything, especially if you had this business before they came. Now, if you built it together, I can see sitting down, coming to an agreement of what you do next. But it should be for support and not permission. That in itself was big for me. And when at the time he was my boyfriend, now was fiance and went to being my husband, it's the same conversation. I was not going to let anything or anyone get in the way of what I've been called to do. And especially when it comes to finances. Yes, do you sit down and have conversations about things. I can't tell you what to do in your household, but I know what worked well for me. And women are asking me, like, how did you have that conversation? Not being afraid to have, which takes me to number three. It's called communication. Communication. Right? Communicating about what it is that you want. Those hard conversations. When I tell you, my husband now and I, I, had, I asked some hard questions and they made me feel uncomfortable, right? What's your credit score? His was much higher than mine. Hello, somebody. But I had that level of income. He had the credit. So it was great for us. I learned something from him. He learned something from me. I didn't, again, didn't have the expectation for him to be me. I had the expectation for him to come to the table and bring value to me and give me the support that I really needed and for me to support him on, on his dreams and, he, and his goals. I truly believe a woman, we are multipliers. We multiply everything we put our hands to and what is poured into us. I knew if I got yet with another man that was pouring negativity into me, that's what I was going to reproduce. You're a multiplier. You give us sperm, we give you a baby. You give us a home or a house, we're going to give you a home. We are multipliers by nature. And when I learned that part of it, it was a game changer for me. I was very cognizant about who I was around. And it became very, I would say, nerve wracking because I was aware of these things and I couldn't avoid it. Once you know it, once you learn it, you can't unlearn it of knowing if you get with the wrong person, powerful women and dating and relationships, if you get with the wrong person, it could destroy who you are, it could destroy who you are to become, and it could tear down an empire. And that, again, that's why communication is so important. What questions are you asking? If you're in this place and you're dating, ask the hard questions. Ask them. Don't avoid them and wait till later. You will be very frustrated along the way. What are the questions that you need to be asking? This person, where do they see themselves a year from now? You know, as powerful women, let's say you're building a business or whatever the case may be. If you know you're building this empire, ask them where do they see themselves? What are they working on? What is it that they want their life to look like? How do they rear their kids? Do they have any children? Do they want children? How do they rear children? How was your ex? What would the last one of the questions I've always asked, and I even asked my husband, what would your ex say about you? And he paused. Now, I was always cognizant when I asked other gentlemen that I was seeing if they went and blew up about she's this, she's that, she's all of this, and I hate her or not. Whoa. Red flag, red flag, red flag. Run, leave your shoes if you have to, right? But he was very laid back, and he was like, well, she would probably say that I didn't do this. And, she would pro and he was very calm, and he'd get upset about it. I was like, wow. Now, then we discuss those things. How are you now about that? It's all called communication. If you're with someone right now or you're dating someone and you can't have, ask those hard questions without them blowing up at you, Houston, we don't have takeoff. These are the three things that I know powerful women deserve and they desire and the three things that they should be, they should be looking for in their next powerful relationship. We don't have to be Barack and Michelle. I'm not saying that. But we do have to be able to coexist together. Let's say you're 40 years old and they're in their 40s. That's 80 years of experience that you bring in together. You're bringing all the body counts before the, that person got into your life. You're bringing all of their past history and all of that. Ask those questions early so you don't find out later. And I'll be honest, love was not enough for me. It was when I was younger. Oh, I just love them. Yeah. Do I like them, though? Can I like them when at the moment I don't feel very loving? 
Start asking these questions. You'll have better relationships. And if you're already in a relationship right now, you have an assessment. You have um, some work to do and conversations to have. Well, I hope this really helped you think about how powerful women or what to do as a powerful woman as you're dating and in marriage, that you can have the best relationship that you've ever had, and it can be one to really bring you to the next level of becoming. This is Dr. Sonia. I hope to see you out there killing the game, not just in love, but having the loving relationships that you deserve and you desire. And I'll see you at the very top.